friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And today I, by request, I'm gonna start doing more of this in that video. So I'm starting off with a little bit of a garden update, which isn't much of an update other than to show you the beginning stages of the cleanup process and getting ready for planting. Now what's going on here is our blueberries have already started to bud out, which had me really concerned because we suddenly got some snow the other day and it, now it's all frozen so I'm not sure hmm I'm not sure how these are gonna fare we will see it, this has happened before and I didn't have any issues with the blueberries but I don't recall them uh, starting to grow quite this soon and then out there in the main garden area it's right now looking pretty barren other than some fever few onions and garlic that are trying to grow um, we are going to go into town tomorrow. We have an appointment in there and pick up some cattle panels we saw a really great deal on and enclose the whole garden area, the whole main garden area, so that we can, um, during the growing season, keep the chickens out. Uh, here's some more of the blueberries. And keep in mind, if you're new, I grow all my blueberries in pots, and they do quite well. So this was one of the first things we did getting into gardening was the blueberries, uh, you know, before we really started expanding out in the yard because we used to have a swimming pool out there. And uh, so we did a lot of pot gardening, container gardening, you know, did the grapevines right at the base of the deck so that they could, you know, planted the grapes right at the base of the deck so that they could grow up and around. And if you're new to my channel, this isn't going to look like much, but you can go back and see some of my videos from last summer and you can see how beautiful my deck looks when everything is this green and full and the, we just have a big wall of green everywhere but right here where the I keep this area open so we could actually get out into the garden in the backyard. But I'll quick view of the solar panels yesterday morning they were covered with snow but the sun came out and melted them all off so there was no need to use Pat's uh, thing that he used last year when we got some sudden snow and scrape them off so we're getting lots of solar collection which is going to play into something I'm going to show you later and then some other things I started out here was getting these pots here cleaned up and are ready for planting more stuff now I was doing strawberries in this pot here in the front but they just never do really great here they just don't think they get quite enough sun in the summertime this gets early morning sun and that's about it i did have a couple of pansies that survived um it looks like that one there did not but i think what i'm going to do in all of these pa pots here is do pansies just like i do in my hanging pots which i still need to finish cleaning up so between the rains I've been managed to get out here and get started on getting some cleanup done and then again if you're new that area right over there next to the chicken coop with the cattle panel archway is where I started we just did that last year in the area inside I grow my potatoes and then um, on the outside edges I grow more beans and um, squash you know pumpkins and stuff and they seem to do okay there last year I'm gonna try to see if I can do a little bit better with those this year uh, and then along that horse fencing over there is where I do most of my beans and peas but I plant beans all over the place and like I said if you've seen any of my previous videos you will have you will have seen that I like to plant beans everywhere especially the the uh, runner beans the scarlet runner and the sunset runners because they add so much beauty and color and they just go everywhere one more thing i wanted to show you that i thought was kind of cool was um i think i showed this last year but this is our little a few years ago pat threw this together it needs a little cleanup <laughs> it's got cobwebs all over it but you know if you don't know what this is it is a little mason bee hotel that he made he just took a you know a, a round and then just drilled holes in it put a little roof on it to, uh, to give it a little extra protection. Plus it's right under the, you know, the Lexan up there that's over the greenhouse. And so I was looking at this the other day and I seen that the mason bees have truly been putting this to use. So every hole to some extent has been filled, some clear to the top, so, or clear to the opening, which is pretty cool. So that was that was really that was really great to see. Just like last year when I saw them busy in there, I'm like, yay! We 
the basin bees are using their little hotel. I was so glad. <laughs> oh, and if you watched my marshmallow video, it was this post right here. These two posts, this one here and this one here that are new because Pat's planning on setting up a even a we have a sliding glass door that we picked up for free and he's thinking about putting that there and have that be in the entryway so that was the additional two posts and one thing I keep forgetting to mention in my previous garden videos there's several reasons for all of these posts you can see there's nothing up there but just some you know pieces of wood going across that's for hanging things uh, letting beans climb on etc but uh, and then, of course, putting the horse fencing on that. But the other purpose is that down the road, because we are in a northern climate and we get lots of rain, we're hoping to eventually cover this whole area and be able to maybe extend our growing season out here in this main garden section. I mean, we have the greenhouse, which is great, but um, it's just, for what, all that we're trying to do, it's just not quite enough. So my, my chickens are getting antsy. They see me out here, they hear me out here. They're saying, hey, let me out. You guys can stay in there for a little bit longer. We'll let you come out and play. Part of the reason I like to leave them in there on nicer days is it gives the dogs a little more free reign in the backyard because the chickens keep chasing them back up on the deck. But on rainy days, I let them out early and then open up the greenhouse door and they love to hang out in there and till up the garden in there, so that's great. All right, I'm gonna go back in the house and show you some other this and that I got going on today. Well, I'm back in the house and you can see I might have a little bit of color on my cheeks for a change because it was just biting cold out there. But let me go ahead and show you what else is going on today, it's what I have to get done. So my counter is full of stuff, as you can see. So starting with, these right here this is my um these are my fabric my waxed fabric wraps that i use as a plastic wrap replacement i try to avoid using plastic wrap or foil as much as possible and so i do use these quite a bit and you might have seen me use them even for rolling out uh, cracker dough in the in the baking pan and it worked really great so, but the, they, they're so well used, I and mean, it's actually been, I think, about a year and a half since I waxed these last, so it is time, and uh, I'll be doing that today, and if you want to know how I do my waxed fabric, you can go ahead and find that video right up here, and I don't recall if I showed this particular piece in there, and this was piece, I think this might even be linen, but this is the one I typically use for my tortillas, when I make tortillas and I just I actually made a pouch and then waxed it all the way around and then um, I just stick the tortillas in there and roll it up now it still isn't it doesn't keep things fresh for really long it just helps it still gets some air in there but obviously if you keep it well waxed it's gonna it's, it's gonna help make a difference I wrap our cheese in it I put I use it as wraps over bowls I just put it right over there but anyway, go check out that video and you can see. And then here's my beeswax ready to go for that. But I have the beeswax out for another purpose that I'll get to in just a moment. Right here is my latest batch of vinegar. And I will be going over some vinegar, more vinegar questions because I still get a lot of questions on vinegar. People get really concerned about the molds and the different things that they see on top of the vinegar. And I would say about 99.9% .9 of the time at least you don't have to worry about it. Molds can be just lifted out and thrown out. Whatever is in the vinegar is gonna get killed by the vinegar. It's really nothing to concern yourself with. Now this particular vinegar I just made from some, uh, we were given a whole bunch of apples and some of them were really punky and not worth eating. So I just turned them into vinegar and I still have a few more that I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut up and make, make into vinegar. So I'll be filtering this out today this seems like a pretty strong one and this one you know like I said this one is apple but if you're new to my channel I make vinegar from just about everything from flowers to herbs to even cedar and juniper branches and uh, the, the floral ones I really like to use for washing my hair um, I've made peach vinegar pear vinegar all kinds and I have a whole playlist of vinegars and and I do answer some different questions in there and you can check that out right up here now I have if you saw my vegan cheese 
recipe. I have since tried it with pecans, which I think I said in a more another video more recently, and loved, loved, loved it. Though the only thing I like better about the cashew, the, the pecan, is that the cashew has a creamier texture. And But either way, I decided I'm going to go ahead and try it with almonds. So I have some almonds soaking, and I did just throw a few cashews in there as well. But just to give it a try to see how the flavor and texture is going to turn out with the almonds. Because not everybody can have certain nuts. Like some people can't have pecans, some people can't have cashews, but maybe people can have almonds or they just don't like the flavor of those things so anyway i'm trying that i've got some pinto beans soaking for making uh the hillbilly beans and cornbread that mr rain likes so much and then right here i have got to get more skin cream made up now people ask me all the time what i do for skincare. all i do is wash with my own homemade soap and then I use my own homemade skin cream. And then on occasion, I do use my homemade uh, clay mask. And I have videos on all these things on how to make your own soap. I will go ahead and link to one of those right up here. Um, I have videos on how to make your own skin cream. I will go ahead and link to that. And I think I might have space for one more uh, eye card. And that will be for the how to make your own mask, your own clay mask. It's all natural, very, very good for your skin and detoxifying, and I will link to that right up here. Now that should take up all five, so anything else I might wanna to link to, I'll try to do at the end or even put in the description box. So that's what all these ingredients are for. And I'm down to, as of the, the time I'm shooting this video, I'm down to one container of skin cream on my Etsy store. So I need to get a big batch made up to put back up on the store before that it's totally sold out. And now, since I was showing you the solar panels, because, and how beautiful the day was, because it's days like these where, when we get lots of solar power that I try to use, utilize it as much as possible. So what I've got going on over here is I'm taking my organic coffee beans and grinding them up and filling up my quart jar. So I, I usually do this on nice days. And I, two reasons why I do it this way. I do have a manual coffee grinder that I, I was using quite a bit, but this does save me so much time. And if I can run it off solar power, I'm not using any electricity, any public power. And then I get my jar filled up and I decide to just do a quart jar so I can keep it as fresh as possible. But the other reason I like to get all my coffee beans ground up or a bunch ground up at a time is so that then I can wash this out and use it for other things like grinding up the the pulp from the nuts when I, after I dry it for using for flour because I find out if this works better than my blender for that and other things I like to grind up that just seem to work better in the coffee grinder rather than in the blender such as seeds and stuff so that's what's going on here and that's pretty much that's pretty much it for that besides the fact that of course I am I have another skirt in the works that I'm finishing up in there on my treadle machine and hopefully I'll have time to get outside and get a little more stuff done but there's really not much I can do out there right now because the ground is just froze solid but I you know if I could just find something to be able to get out there and get a little sun on my skin and on my eyes I, I try to do the best I can because it's just so good for us to get out there like I said in that one video about changing your mindset about health and health care. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed my this and that video today, and I'll try to see if I can get two of these up a month at least. And uh, thanks for watching. Take care, and God bless.